So in one of our recent videos where we talked specifically about the Saab Gripen, in the thumbnail we used a little tag saying better than the F-35, but is it really? It's a common thing to think of when it comes to aircraft to compare, and many military governments around the world actually feel that the Saab Gripen is a better fighter simply because of its cost in purchase and in operations. But let's find out the difference between the two. How's it going everybody? What's going on? How you doing? Dave Wapple here and welcome to FTD Facts, the channel where I look at people, cultures, places, and militaries and military hardware from all around the world. Now today, excited to talk about this video because man, I got a lot of people in our last video who were really butthurt over the thumbnail. So with that today, I figured I'd put my money where my mouth is and I am going to take it to a test and we're going to look at the differences between these two fighters and find out which one is better. Now, a bit of a backstory. Before we get into both of these planes, which perform very well for what they do, both of these fighters are very much a vehicle of interest by many different countries from around the world. For the Saab Gripen, it's a Swedish fighter, sometimes being coined as the Smart Fighter, made by the Saab company, which is famous for making the Viggen and Draken, and many other famous craft from the country. So far, as of 2019, there have been many countries that have an interest in this fighter, and they are the countries of Canada, Brazil, Bulgaria, Botswana, Colombia, Finland, Croatia, and even India. There's also the Philippines, Poland, Switzerland, and many others like Lithuania, Argentina, Austria, Serbia, Slovenia, Vietnam, and the list goes on. As well in today's world, there have been historically and currently some operators of this fighter, which have been the UK, Thailand, South Africa, Hungary, the Czech Republic, and of course, Sweden itself. And as a matter of fact, this is a nice little segue into the F-35. The country of Denmark was interested in the Saab Gripen originally. However, by 2016, they withdrew with their plans to have 27 F-35s delivered to the country in the near future. And as well, the same thing goes with the Netherlands. In 2009, they were planning on having 85 of these Gripens. However, they went with the F-35. Now, the F-35 Lightning II, just an awesome name for the fighter itself. This fighter is made by the trusty old school Lockheed Martin Aeronautics Company, and as a matter of fact, this fighter is so popular that the fighter itself has its own Twitter page, believe it or not. The countries that currently use this fighter, or at least have used it in a historical setting, are as follows. You have the USA, obviously, Belgium, Austria, Israel, Italy, Japan, Norway, and of course the Netherlands. There's also Turkey, South Korea, the UK... My country of Canada also had an interest in the F-35, but because of the costs of the fighter and the runway costs, they unfortunately had to pull out. Which brings us to one of the real main differences of whether or not this fighter is better. Again, better is realistically a perspective. Because what is better for one country is sometimes not better for the other, and especially when it comes to budget, that's a big thing to consider. But before we get into costs and variants and all that sort of stuff, let's look at an overview of these fighters as a whole. Basically, the Saab Gripen is classified as a multi-role fighter capable of fighter attack and recon. It is also a single-seat fighter, but does have the option to be a two-seater. It uses fly-by-wire controls, and it is a delta-wing type aircraft. And for those who don't understand what fly-by-wire means, it's where the movements are converted into an electronic system, where the signals are transmitted by wires to the computer systems. The F-35, although might be a multi-fighter, it is much different in many different ways. This is because the F-35 is not just a multi-role fighter, but a stealth multi-role fighter. Similar to the Saab Gripen, it is a single-seat, single-engine fighter, which of course can have its pros and cons. One of the main differences is that the F-35 is powered by wire. Of course, this is similar to fly-by-wire, however, instead of hydraulic circuits, it uses electrical power circuits that can be controlled digitally by the flight computer, and keeps all the good things of fly-by-wire. Now let's jump into variants. This is where it gets really cool. So the Saab Gripen does have many different variants. There is the A and the B, which were the first two original types. The A was a single-seat fighter and has been used since its introduction in 1996. And for the B, it was the two-seater of this original craft. But however, with many upgrades, the C is now your basic standard single-seat version that has been upgraded to have NATO compatibility. The D, of course, is its improved two-seater. As well, there is also the NG and the E, which have a fuel capacity increased and more armaments. And of course, there is a final variant, which is known as the F. This is a specialized version for Brazil. 
Now the F-35, this is where it gets a little interesting because contrary to many people's beliefs, the F-35, yes, is capable of having three different types of takeoffs. It can do either the carrier catapult, it can do VTOL going straight up, or it can do your just your regular takeoff off of a runway sort of takeoff. The thing though is most people believe that one single version can do this. That's not the case. It's actually three different versions that can do these each individually. And this was because the F-35 was made to do many different things depending on the version. Such as the A version, which is your standard takeoff, the B being your VTOL, and C has not only foldable wings for aircraft carriers and storage, but can take off with the assistance of the catapult on the carrier. Also the C, because it has larger wings, it's capable of going at much slower speeds, which is, you know, very helpful for attacking ground targets. But let's get into the numbers. Let's look at some major differences in size, ornaments, and all that sort of stuff. So firstly, in terms of size, the Sab Gripen is a much smaller fighter and therefore harder to hit depending on the conditions. Of course, the F-35 is a stealth fighter. And I'm going to get into the stealth aspects in a little bit, but let's just keep on the size of these fighters first. So you have the F-35 that has a length of 50.43 feet with a width of 39.94 feet and a height of 17.34. The Sab Gripen, however, is a little bit smaller with a length of 46.26 feet and a width of 27.56 feet and a height of 14.76 feet as well. Getting into some of the nitty gritty aspects of these fighters, for the maximum takeoff weight, the F-35 absolutely destroys the Sab Gripen. As the F-35's MTOW can take up to 70,107 pounds, where the Sab can only take 30,865 pounds. This of course makes the F-35 capable of taking off with much more armaments and heavier equipment, and also including fuel containers if they want to extend their range. On the flip side though, the Saab Gripen 39 is a lot faster. For the F-35, it can go approximately 1,199 miles per hour, which comes in at Mach 1.6+. The Sab Gripen, however, was made for speed, coming in at 1,370 miles per hour, being approximately Mach 2 plus. Basically, your Sab Gripen is capable of going 171 miles per hour faster than the F-35. And speaking of speed, when it comes to engines, the Sab Gripen uses the Volvo RM12, which is a engine that's been around since 1978. It's a very reliable engine. The F-35 uses a rather new one. This is the Pratt Whitney F-135, which has been around since 2009, and a previous model of this engine was used in the F-22 Raptor. And one thing that the Saab Gripen also has over the F-35 is its range. For the F-35, you're basically looking at the range being around 1,379 miles or 2,220 kilometers. Whereas the range as the Saab Gripen is approximately 1,988 or approximately 320,000 kilometers. Ceiling, however, it's been rumored that the F-35 can go much higher than the Saab Gripen, as the F-35 has been said to go above 50,000 feet, where the Saab sits at 50,000 itself. So, of course, the big thing that we got to give the F-35 credit for is the stealth aspect to this fighter. However, though, there is a bit of a drawback when it comes to its stealth abilities. And while we're on the topic of stealth, considering I'm relating this to the country of Israel, who purchased many of these fighters, this was the first country to use the F-35 in combat, but when it comes to their stealth technology, Israel, who've had a lot of experience with this fighter, has unfortunately said that the technology might be countered in about 5 to 10 years. Which is a little bit unfortunate because the F-35 was really pushed out to have a life up of at least 30 to 40 years. So without its stealth technology, there's at least a couple of years in there that its stealth technology might not be very useful. However, of course, over time, stealth technology can be adapted to this fighter, most like how different types of armor can be applied to different versions of tanks and all that sort of stuff. And while we're on the topic of stealth, a lot of people think, well, if it's stealth, it's completely invisible to radar. Well, kind of, but there's other things that go into play besides just that aspect. 
The truth of how the stealth realistically kind of works, it basically makes a fighter able to elude or make it harder for the fighter to be targeted and destroyed. For F-35s, its overall airframe designs helps within this stealth ability, which yes, does make it able to hide within radar to some degree. And it's not just radar, there's also infrared and emissions detection systems it is capable of hiding within. As a matter of fact, it makes it the first stealth VTOL fighter to ever exist in the world. And one other big aspect that really helps this fighter is the fiber mat and radar absorbent materials that it uses. As well, when it comes to the F-35, it has some really interesting interfaces that the Saab Gripen does not have, such as speak recognition. But basically, one of the big factors, like I said, is price when it comes to using these fighters and what they would be used for. So with that, let's take a look at some of the prices on different versions of these fighters. Now, I'm just going to let you guys know this is a rough estimate. Some of these numbers, I've kind of gotten the information from many different places, so they're kind of all over the place. So I've kind of averaged in the middle. For your individual F-35A variant, it comes in at $89.2 million. However, keep that in mind by the year 2020 with the advancement of the production facilities, they say they're going to get that down to $80 million. You also have the B variant, which is 115.5 million, and the C variant, which is 107.7 million. As for the Saab Gripen, way cheaper, not as expensive as the F-35. And to look at your basic C variant, it comes in at approximately 30 to 60 million US dollars. Also, when it comes to the Saab Gripen, it's been around since June 9th of 1996. Whereas the F-35 came out on July 31st, 2015, so that is a much newer fighter. Which to me, I'm like, man, the Saab Gripen, whether or not you think it's not as good as the F-35, for a fighter that's been around for that long, you gotta give it some credit. And probably one major difference between these two is the program costs for both of the fighters. Basically, the Saab Gripen comes in at approximately $13.54 billion as of 2006. The program cost for the F-35, however, came in at approximately $1.508 trillion. Keep in mind that is all spent until approximately the year 2070, so... Eh, hard to tell. Either way, guys, that is a look at the differences between these two great fighters. Which one do you think is the best? Please let me know down there in the comment section below. Again, I really did this as a sequel kind of video to our previous video because I know a lot of you guys were saying, yo, no, what are you talking about? The F-35 is way better. And some people would be like, nah, the sub gripping is, is what it's all about. But anyways, guys, my name is Dave Wapple, and if you guys like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you like military stuff, you want to hit that subscribe button if it's your first time here. And yes, you want to hit that like button because then I know to keep doing more of this type of content. And before you guys get out of here, for all you people from the U.S., I have created a military U.S. playlist and a Sweden military playlist. I've talked about many different departments within these two great countries, so feel free to check them out. I'm going to put it in the description box, put it at the end of this video, and probably up in the cards that are above my head right now or sometime throughout this video. But thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later, okay? Bye-bye.